there's a lot of conspiracy theorists that spread a lot of misinformation about the vaccine. Like for one, a lot of people said that if you got vaccinated, it turned you gay. That's not true. If you got vaccinated, you are already a homosexual. We're going to bring out the man of the hour that, every, that everybody's here to see. He's a comedian, professional troll, Blaze TV host, and proud owner of five cats, and Tucker Carlson's biological son, Primetime 99, Alex Stide. Sean, thank you, Sean. Give it up for this young man. Sean's kicking ass. Game Cox. I love the Game Cox. Don Staley wants all the players to have Game Cox. Is that right? She said that it doesn't matter if you're a boy or girl. If you have a game cock, you can play on the women's team. What the hell's with all that, guys? Actually, uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're conservative. You're against transgenders in women's sport. False. Leah Thomas has done more to help women swimming than any woman has ever done on her own. Did you guys know anything about women swimming before Don Staley? I mean, before Leah Thomas? Nobody's ever heard of women swimming. Nobody gave a damn about women swimming till a man got in there. Why is that? Because women suck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, we love women. You guys are great at having babies. That's about it. But I'm not a misogynist. I love women. I love them a lot. My wife's boyfriend's here tonight. He's not here yet. I don't want to bring him on here. But that's how much I love women is that I'm willing to share them. But, you know, it's such an honor to be here on this campus I know that a couple years ago, some of you guys, if you didn't have your vaccine, you would not be allowed to attend school here. Can you believe that? And I just want to say that there's a lot of conspiracy theorists that spread a lot of misinformation about the vaccine. Like for one, a lot of people said that if you got vaccinated, it turned you gay. That's not true. If you got vaccinated, you are already a homosexual. <laughs> That's the order of operations. That's how it works. I want a vaccine that they tested on eight beagles. I don't need long-term testing. Just try it on a dog, all right? No, and I love being at school because a lot of y'all probably don't know this. I'm primetime 99 pimp on a blimp. You know that. But before I was a pimp on a blimp, I was a high school substitute teacher until I got fired for teaching CRT. Yeah, I, I took all the kids on a field trip and I made the white kids pick cotton. Because, you know, I wanted them to learn, uh, you know, their roots, their ancestry. But we were going to have the African-American kids design FUBU outfits with the freaking cotton. And we were going to be rich, bitch. <laughs> but I got fired. And you know what? It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because this is a true statement. You guys are just young enough to realize this. In your life, there's going to be things that are bad that happen to you. Right? It's just, it's just life. It's It's inevitable. But oftentimes, that bad thing is actually a good thing. Like, perfect example. Let me give you a little backstory of me. You guys ever heard of the TV show Cheaters? You guys are probably too young. We got one guy that's heard of it, the older guy in the audience, guy my age. But it's a show where we would go and we would confront people for cheating on their husbands or wives. And we'd run on a van and be like, you cheater, you scumbag. And the girls would beat up the guys. It was really messed up. But I was a producer on that show. I started off as a production assistant. A really, really sad story. I don't want to get all emotional, but the host of the show is a guy by the name of Clark Gable. His grandfather was Clark Gable from Gone with the Wind. He was a great guy. We loved Clark Gable. He died of a fentanyl overdose. That's right. He bought drugs that were street drugs. He, like, were pain pills or Xanax. I don't know which one. And it had fentanyl in it, and he took it, and he woke up dead. He never woke up. And I was really sad about it, but what they, what they did was... They said, Alex, you know the show backwards and forwards. You're going to be the next host of Cheaters. And then when it came time to start the season, this is April of 2020, right when the pandemic was popping off, Dr. Fauci became a superstar. They hired a black guy by the name of Peter Guns to be the host. And, and it was an affirmative action pick, and, and I understood that. But the reason why I know it was an affirmative action pick, because they made him change his name from Peter Guns to Peter Panky because they didn't want to glamorize gun violence. Yes, because this is owned by Viacom. That's the, you know, so they own CMT, MTV, and VH1. And at the time, I was so depressed. 
I was so depressed. I was like, what am I going to do? I had this job. They said, you can still be the producer. And I said, F that. And that's when I started my podcast. And that's when I started going to city council meetings and going insane for the Ukraine. And when I would go to these city council meetings, as I would talk earnestly. I would say, I don't want to be shut down. I don't want to be vaccinated. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Giving them real bullet points about the tyranny that was happening in the country. And they just, nobody paid attention. Nobody even cared. You know, they just, politicians would just look at their paper, not even look at me. But as soon as I started going insane, as soon as I said, Dr. Fauci, give me that ouchie. Stick that booster in my cooster. <laughs> their faces just changed. They had to pay attention to me. They had to look. They had to notice what I was doing. And that changed my life because the door that I thought was closed, this hosting job of a popular TV show, I'm going to make six figures. I thought, you know, I was set. That door closing was the greatest thing to ever happen to me because now I'm a pimp on a blimp. I'm at USC. I'm with the Gamecocks, guys. We've got Gamecocks all day long. And this wouldn't be possible if that door didn't close because, you know, there's a thing. It's all about perspective. If I drew a six on the ground right here, it would look like a nine to you. So you and I can be looking at the same thing and have different perspectives. And that's what you guys have to do as a young person in life is you got to have some perspective. When something bad happens, don't. Oh my God, my girlfriend broke up with me. I'm so dead. Because you guys are all going to get dumped. I look at you guys probably all have been dumped, right? Have you had your heart broken? That's what I'm saying, but that's life. That's going to make you appreciate the girl of your dreams even that much more. You have to go through some pain. No pain, no gain, pimp. That's life. You have to have some challenges, some adversity. That's what makes you tough. And that's why... I love America because America is about the comeback kid, you know, the underdog story. Perfect example, Donald Trump, guys. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, very wealthy guy, for sure. But he went bankrupt, and he built it back up. He became, you know, the president of the United States when nobody wanted him to. He's a perfect example of if you grind hard enough, if you shine hard enough, you can make it in this world. That's what I want to try to preach, even though this, I'm not a preacher. Uh, I am a member of the Church of Scientology. <laughs> you guys want to learn about Xenu? Yeah. yeah, intergalactic warrior that he's responsible for all of our depression and anxiety through Thetans. If you guys have uh, $1,100, and I just need 1100 bucks, and you guys can join the religion. No, but what I'm saying is we are built on the comeback story. I love an underdog. So being a white man in this country, guys, you guys are all underdogs. Because a Venezuelan immigrant gets to come across the border, and they go to New York City, and they get a free hotel room. They get a free gift card. You don't get a free gift card. I don't get a free gift card. It's because this country wants you to suffer a little bit, but that suffering will make you stronger. And I suffer all the time when my wife and her boyfriend are doing God knows what. <laughs> and with that being said, I just want to do a, a quick interlude. Don Terrius, come out here now, Don Terrius, hurry. Come on, Don Terrius, my wife is waiting for you. These young kids, guys, give it up for Don Terrius, my wife's boyfriend. If you have any change, please, he has a change cup. You guys have any money? He does take Venmo, too. Cash app. Who has cash app? He takes credit cards. You guys have a credit card? Yeah. Just take a picture of that. Make sure to get the last four of his social as well. See, this is a hero. Yes, give it up for this man. Uh, Don Terry, tell them a little bit about what it's like, you know, experiencing this college atmosphere. Oh, man, it's, it, it has been amazing, you know. Uh, the highlights, the beautiful young people all around, uh, you know, just looking great, you know. Make me feel like, it made me want to wish I was younger and successful like yeah, you guys. Tell them, guys, they kicked us out of the library. Oh, that today. part, that part. Oh, just, yeah. We're yeah. Cool. We haven't posted it yet, but tell them, why did they profile you? I have no idea. I I, I covered the nips. Covered the I nips. covered the nips. Uh, guys, what else they want me to do? Covered. Yeah. And a brother, brother, a brother threw me out. Yes, black on black crime. Yeah. Not okay. It's not okay. Not in this America. No. Not in this Only America. Okay with white on black crime. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All the other crime we're not going to talk about. Yes. Exactly.
Exactly. So, Ontario's, how was your experience in South Carolina? It's great. I love the hotel. You know, I just wish, you know, they don't smoke weed here, right? All right, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been smoking weed all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, no, it's not uh, funny. I've been trying to tell you stop smoking. I, know. I brought it to the airport. They let me. Yes. I mean, this is my wife's boyfriend. Right? I mean, yeah, Somebody yeah. In jail for drug smuggling. All <sighs> he wants to smoke a joint. It's illegal in New York. Oh, darn. Oh, yeah. Shout outs to the women's team. You guys are great. Yeah. Shout outs to them. Yeah. Ah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. So, uh, what else about this? It's, I love the weather. The weather's nice and hot, guys. So, I might come back. I haven't seen any bums, guys. What's going on? Where are all the homeless people? This yeah. Is man we've seen this whole time. yeah i feel i feel lo alone i feel alone i mean you know i, I and my wife's not here to be with and them. no no it's a very lonely hotel room guys so if anybody wants to put coconut on my back please yeah, we did, we did have a co -ed yeah coconut oil on yeah thank you is she here no she no all right all right all right she's training orders so okay I, I, I'm, that sounds about right that's yeah. the way it usually ends up for me so but let's yeah. see that mic real quick but I want to ask you, Don Terris, what do you think? Don Staley said it's okay for transgenders to play against the women. What do you think about all of these transgender athletes p playing against women? No, 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 no. Let's not do it, guys. I mean, come on. You guys see, right? We men are strong, right? Yeah! No matter what we try to do, guys, you know what I mean? It's physically impossible. And I've seen some of these sports where, you know, women go against transgender and it's not it, it, it's not a good result you know i they get that's what i was trying to say you know i was just trying to say it's good to compete fair is fair is great but there's just no it's and not guys, fair they have an unfair advantage because they have a propeller in their pants a exactly it's, i mean it works i still have one and it works yeah, it's huge makes me feel very bad i don't want to talk about the size of his genitals it makes me feel really depressed you guys know what BBC stands for? It's disgusting. If you know that, you guys are all going to go to hell. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's another thing, though, too. You know, on a serious note, what's the deal with all this porn, guys? All these girls are doing OnlyFans. Don't do OnlyFans. Do not sell your butthole for $5 on the Internet. It will come back to bite you because at one point you're going to have to get a real job and everybody at your work, when you're working at Golden Corral, is going to be like, I've seen Suzanne's butthole for $5. It follows you, especially with the internet. Everything follows you. I mean, my wife's boyfriend follows me. So deal, I mean, I know what it's like to have demons following you every day. I have to look at him in the mirror. I mean, look at these tapes on his breast. We're probably going to get a terms of service strike on YouTube right now for sexual content. These are double Ds. Well, how are your breasts so big? Uh, the milk in New York. <laughs> yeah. It makes That's so disgusting. Milk? Out of milk, guys, and it just sticks to me. After a certain age, you gotta stop drinking milk because it just sticks to you, and that's where it goes. This, he's a diet expert. He's literally, guys, he knows all about fitness and diets. Speaking of fitness and diets, uh, we've been talking a lot about the transgender agenda, but guys, did you know that Michelle Obama has a penis? <laughs> we know this, right? We all agree that Michelle has a penis. Michael Obama, this is how I know. Yes, Dontarius, do you not realize Michelle has a wiener? Yeah, no, I believe, no. Wow. And Barack Obama, Barack Obama used to write love letters, gay love letters, and send them to his girlfriend. You guys know this? Wait, are you guys kidding me right now? You guys really didn't know this? Everybody Google this right now. Type in Barack Obama gay love letters. And he would talk, he would talk in these letters about how he fantasized having sex with a man. Then he married one. But this is real. No, he really did write these letters saying that he fantasized. And then his girlfriend released these recently. This is true. Barack Obama. Can you, you're, you're learning something new right now, aren't you? I am. I am. I'm, uh, I'm uh, jaw-dropping news, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I've seen the daughters. They're very beautiful. I'm like, where did they come from? Yeah, it's a surrogate, dog. The same way Kim Kardashian has it. All right, guys. I want to take a moment of silence. Uh, a, a hero, an American hero, died this week. O.J. Simpson. Do you think O.J. Simpson was not guilty, right? Ah. You're a black guy. You have to be very careful when you answer this question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Did O.J. do it? Did he kill Ron and Nicole Brown Simpson? I mean, not according to the trial. <laughs> I mean, 
right? <laughs> if, the, if the glove don't fit. You must do quit. Yeah. No, there's a lot of conspiracies. I love conspiracies. I'm a proud tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. So, you know, there's a big conspiracy that supposedly you guys are going to learn something new that I don't know if you guys have heard this. I'm giving you guys new knowledge. Supposedly, after OJ died, I was reading some crazy stuff on uh, Twitter. Did you know that one of the suspects in the murder of Ron and Nicole Brown Simpson was OJ's son? And then listen, you're like, what is that conspiracy? So the way that OJ, I got to fix my MAGA hat. The way that OJ supposedly killed Ron and Nicole was with a knife, right? Yeah. Supposedly, he didn't even own the knife that killed Ron and Nicole, but his son did because his son was a chef at a popular restaurant. This is true. Look it up. That OJ's son was a chef and that, in the night that Nicole Brown Simpson died, there was a, they had a reservation for 15 people at his restaurant. And they went, and you guys might not know this, but Ron, Nicole's boyfriend at the time, was a waiter at another popular restaurant in L.A. And they went and ate at that restaurant that same night. So the conspiracy is that the son was mad that they canceled the reservation and went and stabbed Nicole Brown Simpson. No way. Yes. Isn't that crazy, guys? But you know what's even crazier than that? On 9-11, three towers fell down from two planes. <laughs> you guys remember that? You guys are so young. You don't even remember that, dude. It was bad. My dad was crying when that happened. And then everybody in the media said, we have to go to the Middle East because there's weapons of mass destruction. They said this like crazy. They said there's weapons of mass destruction. We went over there to Afghanistan. They didn't have weapons of jack shit. They literally had some camels and some dirt. That's all they had. And they also had Afghani poppy. Did y'all know this? You guys know about this? And this poppy was the whole source of the heroin trade. And the Taliban actually stopped growing poppy when they were there. And it was the United States troops that encouraged them to grow it again. And then when Joe Biden left, when we withdrew from the Middle East, we didn't need the poppy anymore because why? We have a fentanyl epidemic. We're getting cheap freaking opiates from China. What do you think about that? You see a lot of people doing opiates, right? Uh, oh, f uh, no, no, not that. What I, I've seen people doing fentanyl and all the other drugs there. Don't do fentanyl! None of you do fentanyl! I don't care how depressed, how sorry, sorry you are. Don't do it! You look like you're on it right now! Are you on fentanyl? Do not do it! Just say no! But that D.A.R.E. program taught me a lot about drugs. I didn't have any idea what ecstasy was till they told me. <laughs> and now I'm on it right now. It's dangerous. It's a slippery slope. All drugs are bad. But, hey, we all want to medicate. We all have stress. We like to have a drink, this and that. But if you guys drink, I want you all to take a mental picture of this man right here. This is what drugs and alcohol will do to you. Do you guys smoke weed? Who smokes weed in here? Who smokes weed? You smoke weed? You smoke weed? You want to end up like that? Is that what you want to be when you grow up? That's what you want to look like? Stop smoking weed! Oh my gosh! We might have saved this kid's life! I know you smoke weed! Yes, you have dreadlocks. Everybody with dreadlocks smokes weed. Everybody knows this. This is common knowledge. No good. You don't smoke weed. Stop smoking it. Just do cocaine. That's like Hunter Biden, all right? <laughs> Hunter Biden does coke and it's cool. No, no. What? <laughs> no cocaine. <laughs> no. All right, you can uh, use maybe a little coke, right? All right. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. <sighs> I'm going to do a couple of jokes, okay, guys? All right. Um, I also do a joke about 9-11. Yeah, yeah. I never... Yeah, I never forget. All right, guys. Uh, I, I was, uh, can I keep going? All right, yeah. Um, I should have did a joke about Will Smith. Yeah, I bet it was going to hit. Come on, that joke rocks. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 I felt that. I got, his, I got his credit card, so it's okay. I'll, I'll get even. I'll get even. I'll get even. 
Uh, I had sex with a soccer mom. Yeah, just for kicks. <laughs> hey, that wasn't my goal. <laughs> but she was a keeper. I I did on the plane over. Yeah, I said, yeah. I got, all right, all right. Uh, you guys heard about R. Kelly? He was assaulted in prison, but don't worry, his injuries are minor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I never get my pregnant, my my girlfriend pregnant on my sofa. Yeah, it's a pullout. All right, guys. All right, guys. Thank you so much. All right, go, John Don't go too far away. We might need you. Just try not to show your butt crack too much on camera. That's going to get it. No, we'll get kicked off YouTube. Don't show the butt, please. Thank God. That ass crack has got me in so much trouble. No, he talks about a lot of stuff because the world we're living in is a lot of conspiracy because, listen, you see this hat I'm wearing? I love Donald Trump, okay? And I believe that Donald Trump is not perfect, of course, you know. He likes to grab him by the pussy, but so do I. <laughs> so that's what I like about him. But let me tell you something. In the 2020 election, you may not know this, but Donald Trump won all 50 states when it came to in-person voting. Even the most liberal states, California, New York. But when it came to mail-in ballots, Joe Biden won all 50 states, even the most conservative ones. So my point is, it was rigged. It was a lie. And the people that went and wanted to speak out against us on January 6th are turned into domestic terrorists for trying to bring awareness. So I, I say this not to scare you guys, but if you believe the government, then you're an idiot, all right? Because the government is going to constantly pee on you and tell you it's raining. And even Donald Trump, even the most popular celebrity... Idolizing a celebrity or politician is like thinking the stripper actually likes you. <laughs> okay? They don't like you. They don't care about you. These people are basically professional fundraisers. All they want from you is money. Okay? So do not give in to this, oh, I, I'm on the right side. I'm on the left side. Because really, we have a uniparty. Both sides are in it to rig it against us. So, like, if we do leave this, we, when we leave here tonight, that's like the one message that I do want to get across is that <clears throat> the only person that you can put hope in if you want to have a successful life is yourself. That's the only person you can control. We can't control these crazy politicians. Listen, I called AOC a big booty Latina and it made me famous. <laughs> and we should all do that. We should all be, I mean, you don't have to go call her big booty Latina, but I'm saying we should all be making fun of these politicians. They all suck. They literally, they all suck. Like Nikki Haley, you guys know that hoe? I had to call her a hoe. She almost got me fired from my job at the Blaze. She really did, all because I brought up the fact that she allegedly cheated on her husband at a campaign event and I called one of her staffers a pussy, but they deserved it. <laughs> they deserved it. I don't want a freaking woman that's gonna cheat on me or you know, she's cheating on her husband. You know she's probably gonna cheat on this country. So. It is a little bit about putting our hope and prayers into politicians. And it's, it's just, it's a losing proposition. But this is another thing I do want to get across, is that one of the biggest scams that they perpetuated on the youth of the world, and they did it to me too, is they want to make you think that your life is insignificant. They want to make you think that two rocks smashed together and the Big Bang happened and we all evolved from pond scum. That's not true. We didn't evolve abiogenesis, one cell split, and that's how we got the dinosaurs. That's not true. There was a creator. God created this earth. Whether you're religious or not, that's on you. But guys, just the fact that you're here, having this experience, at one point we had 8,000 grandparents. That's true. We had thousands and thousands and thousands of grandparents. And every single thing had to go right for us to be here. So we've already won the lottery of life. But they don't tell you that. They want to try to make you feel like you're insignificant that nothing matters, and that's the farthest thing from the truth because I was an idiot. I am still an idiot, as you can see, my wife's boyfriend, you can tell. But because I go out and I speak my mind and I call people out to their face, I've been able to be successful, and if I can do it, you guys can do it too. But the most important thing is having passion. Like, what are you guys passionate about? And whatever that is, you should just go after that. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about 
the opinions of strangers because you're never going to please some stranger. As a matter of fact, when you start doing well in life, that's when you get the most haters. When you're doing bad, nobody gives a damn. So once you start having success, that's when the haters are going to come out. So you have to be unapologetically yourself. You have to be fearless. You have to not worry about the opinions of others because those opinions don't dictate your life. Those opinions don't decide whether you're successful or not. But we think it does. We think, oh, I got to have a car that I got to have a Mercedes. I got to have all this materialistic bullshit. None of that matters. Literally, none of that matters. You see, homeless crackheads all have girlfriends. How the hell? <laughs> you always see them in twos. I mean, if a homeless crackhead can get a girlfriend, so can you, okay? So you don't need a freaking new Lexus to get a girlfriend. And your wife can have a boyfriend if you want to be like me and uh, AOC's. AOC's. I just miss her so much. You know, and she unironically turned me into a celebrity overnight. Not that I'm a real celebrity, but I'm saying when she villainized me, she turned me into like a folk hero by saying that I sexually harassed her, which I kind of did a little, but um, <laughs> she was asking for it. She wanted it. <laughs> she wanted it. She was wearing the tight skirt. She definitely had a thong on, I'm sure. Do any of you guys have thongs on? I better hope not. Dontarius does, though. John, do you have your thong on? Your thong. Thong underwear. You didn't bring your thong? You're fired, dude. My wife loves when you wear that thong. All right, well, I'm up here, guys, and I just want to try to spread a little good vibrational energy to the youth of America, to you guys, because now you still have a chance to make a difference in this world. But if you, if you're, if you listen to the mainstream media, if you make everything about right versus the left, you're never going to be successful. For me, when I started becoming more popular and people started watching more of my content is when I started to astroturf as like a fake liberal. I said, oh, Dr. Fauci, give me that ouchie. Because people didn't know if it's real or fake because the world has become such a clown show, it's hard to tell the difference of what's real and fake anymore. I mean, now we literally have males that are competing in women's college sports. Ten years ago, they would have said, oh, that's impossible. So ten years from now, things are going to be even more screwed up. Like, I, I mean, I don't have any kids, but I'm kind of afraid to have kids because, dude, I don't know if the earth is going to be here in ten years. I mean, I'm kind of kidding. I mean, I think the earth will be here, but the world that we live in is going to be so different with AI and the technology. This is a big conspiracy that I love. As you guys have seen all of this artificial intelligence, right? Well, this is the goal, is that in the future, they want to plug you into a machine where it's indistinguishable from reality. And in this, like, fake world, the matrix, we'll call it, the metaverse, you get to be the, the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. You get to be, you know, the CEO of Pepsi Cola, be a multimillionaire, and they're gonna hook something up to your genitals so you ejaculate a thousand times a day. I know, this kid loves it. <laughs> this kid loves it. But the whole sad reality of this is that when they do create this technology, people are gonna run and just be in line like the new AirPods or whatever new technology device. People are gonna wanna plug into that fake world. Because, you know, life is so bad here. That's what they want to do. They want to scare you. They want to make you think that climate change is going to kill us all. Yeah, that's bullshit. If that was, if that was the case, why does Bill Gates, Barack Obama, uh, why do they all have beach houses? Because they don't give a damn. They know the water levels aren't rising. So they lie to us. And that's what I want to try to uh, uh, just hammer home. Do not believe the lies. Do not believe the lies. So many times. What is something that somebody's lied to you about recently? You in the glasses. I like you. Somebody's lied to you about something. Oh, yeah. You, stealing my car. you got your car stolen? Was it a Venezuelan immigrant? Who was it? What, what happened? I kind of like this story. Um, my buddy was like, hey, I brought it to the last time the car. Next thing I know, my car's gone. <laughs> and that's your buddy that stole it? No, no, no. <laughs> Dude, what? I'm convinced he was involved, although he was the thief. I chose to film this. So you guys are stealing each other's cars? What the hell's going on over here, dude? You guys are insane. This guy, this kid's mental. Your own friends will steal your car behind your back. Your own friends. Trust no one. Trust no one. Definitely not the government. You can't even trust your own damn friends. It was kind of a mistake. What kind of, was it a mistake? What kind of car was it? Toyota or something? 
2022 Honda. That's a great car. The Honda is the best. That car run for 200,000 miles. It's great. No, I used to actually sell cars too. And let me tell you something. Selling cars in the Texas heat is one of the hardest jobs in the world because I would sell a lot of lemons and then the Mexican guys would come and they would always call me out. They'd always get underneath it and they'd be like, Senor, there's a leak. And I'd always be like, no, there's not. Then I would look and there was always a leak. <laughs> I always got caught. So that was one thing I learned like in the car business and you guys will learn this is that it's, it's dog eat dog in the real world. It's literally dog eat dog. So cherish these moments that you have. I feel like Billy Madison, I just want to yell at you. This is the prime of your life. You guys can wake up at 11. You guys can go to class, skip class, smoke weed, have sex, whatever you want. I'm not saying to do all that. But the repercussions are a lot less than when you're my age or you're Don Terrace's age doing it. So this is a time when you guys are supposed to make mistakes, take risks, do what you feel. Actually, I, I take that back. Don't do... That, that's like Aleister Crowley, do, do, do you know, uh, thou wilt or whatever the hell the saying is. I'm not saying that. I'm not just saying doing whatever you want. But you guys should take chances and take risks now because the repercussions, like when something bad happens, is just so much smaller. You guys can always catch back up. So at this juncture of your life, I'm very jealous. I'm very jealous because if I could go back in a time machine, I would be a billionaire by now. You know, if I could go back, you know, 15 years and do it all over again, I would have gone and I would have started calling out politicians sooner. I would have started editing, creating content sooner. And that's an avenue that, what are you guys studying? Is anybody studying like uh, communications or television or anything? No? You are? Okay, and that's a great skill. A lot of people don't realize, you think, oh, editing so hard. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. So I encourage in this stupid social media world we live in that, Everybody, if you do have a passion for something, film it and shoot it. It doesn't have to be like calling a politician a big booty Latina. You don't have to do that. But whatever you're passionate about, you should film it, whether it's cars, whether it's, I don't know. I don't know what your interests are, but put it on camera. Learn how to edit. It takes two seconds. Watch a YouTube video. And you too can be a viral sensation like Primetime 99 Alex Sign. But... You can't do that unless you try. That's another thing is effort. Like, do you guys, are you guys happy with your output? Like, when you look in the mirror, you're like, man, I, did I give 100%? Is this what I'm doing? Like, you always have to ask yourself, you are your own worst enemy, not somebody else. It's the man in the mirror, woman in the mirror. So that's that internal battle. For me, I like Oreos. I eat so much Oreos, I can't tell myself to stop. I have an eating disorder. I'm a heavy set fella. And then my wife and her boyfriend are doing God knows what in the room next door. It's how I medicate my pain, folks. I need these Oreos. That's what I need. But you guys need something else. And whatever that is, I know that you guys can find it. Isn't that right, Dontarius? God. Everybody look at him, and I just want you guys to really take a snapshot. Every time you smoke that weed, I want you to look at that. Did you take a picture of him? No, take a picture of him and just think about that. This is your brain on weed. That's the munchies. That's, he said it's milk. It's because he's freaking so high. He's eating at the buffet all day. He's a golden corral. He said he wants fried gamecocks. He's like, oh, this school's named after chickens? He loves fried chicken. Not because he's black. Do not do that. Do not do that. All races love fried chicken, okay? Isn't that right, Don Terry? A lot of people say, oh, well, you love to uh, separate things by sexual orientation or color. But that's what the left does. The left makes everything about sexual orientation or, or color. Like, um, there's this new sexuality. Have you guys heard of this? It's called eco sexual. People that love nature. Have you guys heard of it? Yeah, like people that like get sexually aroused by like trees. It's true. They call it LGB tree. <laughs> but that's a real thing. There is a thing called the ecosexuals. Now in this day and age, that's crazy. They'll tell you there's 50 genders. There's two genders. There's male or female. All right. That's all there is. I mean, you know, it's not that complicated, but they're going to convince young kids that you're born in the wrong body. There's nothing more evil than that, telling a kid that you're born in the wrong body. And on top of that, you know how they'll get these gender reassignment surgeries approved by the parents? They tell the parents that the kid is going to kill themselves if we don't chop off their dick. 
Think about that. You tell parents that your son is going to be dead if you don't cut off her breasts. That's sick. That's disgusting. We live in a clown world. We have to call this out. And that's what I do with my content. That's what I try to do with humor because I said this at the beginning. When I spoke very seriously, nobody cared. Nobody gave a damn. But as soon as I started to lampoon people, that's when they started to pay attention. And I had to take a risk. I didn't know if it was going to work. I didn't know what the hell was going to happen. And for me, it worked out. As you see, I'm the pimp on a blimp, always eating steak and shrimp, walk with a leer. And I do this damn thing, guys. And if, if I can do it, you can too. You guys are a bright bunch. You guys came here to see the pimp. You guys are already in the right place. And I, I'm mad though there's no Antifa here. Where's the Antifa at? Is that, are they think they're sleeping? Well, they're probably on fentanyl, actually. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely watching this online right now. Yeah, they hate Riley Gaines, and Riley Gaines calls out their transgender agenda. We love Riley Gaines, but why do they hate her? Like, she literally lost to a biological male, and somehow she's the villain. So we live in the upside-down world. We live in a clown world. It's hard to make sense of it, and for me, I started clowning the world back, and that's what you guys have to do, too, a little bit. And, you know, it's hard. It's not easy to call somebody a big booty Latina. I know it's not... You have to find AOC, and I know where she lives. I know exactly where she lives. I know what car she drives. I know where her grandmother lives. I know where her aunt lives. I know her bank account number. I know where her abuelita is. What? I know, and they, all these conservatives raised all this money for her, and she turned down the money. Her, her grandmother's roof is collapsing. She's like, oh, no, I don't want that money. It's dirty conservative money. Shut up, bitch. Help your abuelita. <laughs> Make some tacos. That's not racist. The Mexicans like tacos. Actually, that's one thing. Where is, uh, I'm from Texas. I'm from Dallas. Everywhere I go, you know, you can't throw a rock without hitting 10 Mexicans or illegal immigrants. Where Are there any illegal immigrants here? Yeah, there's not really. No, you guys got it made in the shade. You guys better, trust me, it's nice. It's nice because, listen, not all these immigrants are very, uh, they work for the cartel. Have you guys ever heard of the cartel? Drug traffickers? Dude, they'll cut your throat and stick your tongue through your throat. And Joe Biden's like, come on in, folks. Come on in. Here's a free gift card in a hotel in New York City. We love the cartel. The cartel's one of our biggest donors. Who here? We already talked about this, but none of you beautiful ladies are going to do OnlyFans. Is that right? Say you're never, because your boyfriend's smoking weed, so you're already... You're already say I'll never do OnlyFans. Thank God. Give it up for her. That's a beautiful, good woman. No OnlyFans. Let the whores on the street do that. Not you beautiful, young, college-educated people. What a waste of an education. And there's people that, uh, you know, do go to college and then they end up selling their butthole online. So... It happens. I don't want it to happen to you guys. That's the last thing I want to happen to you guys. I want you guys to have successful adult lives. You guys are young adults. Is that right? Is that the proper term? Because I want to call you kids, but obviously you guys aren't kids. You guys smoke weed, and <laughs> this guy, you don't do Fenton, right? You're just tired. Just You've been up. I know it's hard. You guys just won the championship. Did you guys party at the parade uh, yesterday? You guys got wasted? You didn't? Did you do any... Any, did you do any extracurricular activities? Any Hunter Biden type stuff? Do not do that. <laughs> do you guys see Joe Biden took a, sh a shower with his daughter? Did you guys read that? Yes, Ashley Biden in her diary talked about how her dad took a shower with her. And the people on the left would be like, I think that's pediatrician approved to sleep with your, uh, to shower with your kid up to 12 years old. False. Do not shower with your daughter. That makes you a pedophile. We got the sniffer in chief, guys. <laughs> Joe Biden's sniffing things. I'd love to just get next to him and just rip it. I just fart. <laughs> smell that, Joe. How do them apples smell? Mother trucker. I'm sick of these damn politicians. Because, guys, America is a great country. It is a great country. But we're being led astray by idiots that are running this. We're being led astray by a uniparty of elite politicians that don't care about you. You know how I know this? You guys ever heard of a guy by the name of Jeffrey Epstein? Yes. 
The Lolita Express. Bill Clinton was on this plane 26 times doing Lord knows what. And have we heard a peep about that? Does the media cover that? They don't care if children get molested. Jeffrey Epstein did it. He's connected to the most powerful people in the world. Nobody gets prosecuted. But if you're walking in Washington, D.C. on January 6th, they will literally throw you in jail. We have a corrupt system. So we got to call out the corruption, okay? That guy, are you smoking weed? You're coughing like you're smoking weed. This isn't a 420 fest, dude. I'm drug testing. Get out my drug test kit, Sean. I'm testing all of you freaking kids. I want to save y'all. I don't want you guys to get hooked on dope and become like Dontarius. Tell them to just say no. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know if I agree with that statement, but, you know, there's nothing else we can do. So tonight, what did we learn? We learned that 9-11 was an inside job perpetrated by the government to start a never-ending war in the Middle East and uh, money launder from us. We also learned that the vaccine doesn't turn you gay. You were already gay when you got vaccinated. We learned that Kamala Harris got her job by giving BJs. Did you guys know that too? Yes! So that should encourage you girls if you guys do want to move up. <laughs> yeah. It's not that hard. Not you, not you. Do not do that. But it does work. She became the vice president, so. Heels up Harris. Yeah. What did you say? Heels up Harris. Heels up Harris. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to steal that one. But we also learned uh, um, the great Nikki Haley allegedly cheated on her husband. Did you guys know that one, too? What's that all about, dude? I thought you guys in South Carolina were classy. You don't claim that, how? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. F Clemson. We love the game, Cox. We stand with the game, Cox. The bigger the game, Cox, the better. But size doesn't matter. That's what my wife says. It's all about the motion in the ocean. Doesn't matter, Dontarius. It doesn't matter. Why are you always bringing Deborah up? I mean, you brought her up. We should have never freaking took you off the street. That was the biggest mistake of my life. But we've gone viral on the internet enough to pay for it. So, you guys know Barstool Sports? Dave Portnoy, he's, he's on, a, he's on a, a winning streak, you know. And I've tried to befriend Dave, but he hates me because I, me and Dontaria stormed his capital. Yeah, we stormed the Barstool Sports headquarters and Dontarius' ass was hanging out the whole time. <laughs> and then the employees beat me up. Do you remember that one girl that beat my ass? Yeah. She cut my face open with her uh, prosthetic nail or whatever. I mean, and I actually thought she was transgender. No, she's just a scary looking black woman. Um, the way she beat me up, I had to say that. I had to tell my friends. They're like, dude, you got your ass kicked. I was like, I'm pretty sure she's transgender. They're like, no, I'm pretty sure she's not. You're just a pussy, Alex. Ugh. But I'm not. I'm a freaking man. I'm a badass. I'm a pimp on a blimp. Always eating steak and shrimp. And you guys can do it too. So before we do some Q&A, DJ, do we got a little uh, music that we can do a little Gamecock rap? Where are my Gamecocks at? I need all my Gamecocks hard and in charge. Because a pimp on a blimp is alive. Gamecock. You don't need to stuff a sock. If you're Don Terrius, you're 13 inches. And you know you are really large. I'm a pimp and I'm in charge. Go insane for the Ukraine. Gotta put a bullet in Putin's brain. Dr. Fauci, give me that ouchie. Test that shit on another beagle. I don't give a damn if the vaccine's legal. Stick it in my arm. Then we can't go to a fentanyl farm. Hang out with a bunch of China men. And all on the street, you can sell pictures of your nasty ass feet on OnlyFans. Don't you do it! I don't care if you say, screw it, I'm a pimp on a blimp, and I'm always eating shrimp, and I love my game cock so damn much. I just want to freaking touch all of your hearts. Come on, Don Terrius, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go game cock, go game cock, go game cock, go game cock, go, go. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, uh, I'm down Terriers. Yo, yo, I'm here just to tell you that I'm about to go have a drink. What did you guys think? I'm about to smoke this blunt. I'm not pulling no stunt. I'm here with the pit. You know, he, he, he might tell me he's skip. Yeah, yeah. Ontario, here in South Carolina, yeah. Yes! That's how we do it, baby! That's how we do it! Okay, all right. Now it's time for the best part of the show. We're gonna do Q&A, so uh, we wanna ask, if you guys wanna ask me or Dontarius a question, please, sh shoot, you know, we, yes, the well-dressed man. Oh, Tiffany Gomez is my very good friend. You know, my girlfriend, if she's watching this, no, I'm not raising her up. A little I am, but um, no, Tiffany's actually nice. We, <laughs> it's funny, though, about Tiffany. She's the girl, you guys remember the viral plane lady that said, that mother effer's not real. That went crazy on the plane. And she went viral, and now she can't, uh, she's not allowed to fly on American Airlines. So uh, she's kind of uh, uh, Tiffany. I love Tiffany, but I guess when you go... This is what they said. They said this to me at the Blaze. I go viral all the time, sometimes for good stuff, sometimes for bad stuff. But when you go viral for something bad, it's, it sucks. It really does suck. Like the Nikki Haley thing when I got mad at her, like, you know, she had all these politicians coming after me. So for her, even though we all think it's funny, we think she's hot, she's like doesn't like her fame. You know what I mean? She, I, uh, if you talk to her, she wishes she could go back and not be famous from that. <laughs> So it's going viral is not always the best thing. Sometimes it can be a bad thing, but we do love Tiffany Gomez. So crazy plain lady, we love you. All right, who, come on, who has a question? Let's come on, let's make this interactive. I love the Kappa shirt, that's good, soccer. I got one for Don Terry. Okay, come on. What was it like being on a fish tank? Oh, you a Sam Hyde fish tank fan? <laughs> yeah. Sam Hyde rules. Oh yeah, yeah, the Sam Hyde rules. That was a great experience, but not smoking uh, weed for three days almost killed me, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah. and uh, Tell them why you got kicked out for smoking crack? I mean, because there was no weed. <laughs> Medicinal crack. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, but it was a great experience. I mean, kudos to those guys that stick around for eight weeks together to, to win, you know, that prize. I couldn't do it. It was back to the streets for me. Yeah, the streets were better. So you like Sam Hyde? Sam Hyde's a badass, isn't he? Fish Tank is a house we lived in with Don Terrius, my wife's boyfriend. We were under 24-7 surveillance, and they put you through, like, a mental Vietnam where they make you eat crap, and, I mean, there's, these TTSs are just insane. They called you the N-word a lot. I did, but I, 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 I told them to, so it's okay. <laughs> you, you liked it a little. Yeah, I liked it a little. After, yeah, after a few days, I wanted to feel like I was in the hood. I'm like, yeah, we all niggas, all right? Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! We love Black Lives Matter. Don Staley, we stand you. Um, yeah, I know, but Fish Tank Sam Hyde, he's a badass. He's probably like uh, the number one content creator, in my opinion, that's out right now. So I love Sam. And it, yeah, I was on it. You didn't watch when I was on it? Are you kidding? I was on it, and I was on it this season. You didn't notice it this season? What are you talking about, dude? You're trying to fight me? Let's fight. I'm just kidding. Um... Who has a question? Come on, let's make this interactive, guys. Uh, you know, this is, it's almost like we're in a classroom in a way. Okay, I like this guy. You stole the car, though. You're the car thief. This guy's stealing cars. We talked about fentanyl. We talked about weed. We talked about cocaine. What do you think about the danger of big corporate water? <laughs> <laughs> big corporate water. Dude, what are you talking about? These kids are brilliant. Dude, the water's turning the frogs gay, guys. Alex Jones said that, and that sounds like a conspiracy, but no, it's called astrazine. When, you, when there's actually stuff in water, and it's in like Dasani, it's in the big corporate waters. See, this kid's brilliant. I've been saying, for, I've been saying this for two years now. Yeah, and, and also, well, well, yeah, just, I only drink Coke Zero, so I'm in that same vi vibe, but um, no, this is real. The fluoride, when you guys drink fluoridated water, we all have a pineal gland, it's our third eye. And it literally calcifies that. And it makes you like less connected with the world. So fluoridated water not only turns you gay, but it makes you less connected with your soul. So this guy's a genius. Not all water is created equal. Damn, dude, you're smart. You're gonna be a champion one day. <laughs> Alex Jones Jr. over here, I love it. Okay, who, who's got a question? 
People are saying you're Tucker Carlson's biological son. I just want to put it on the record. Are you going to call him out? Is he going to submit to a DNA test? Uh, we did a DNA test on my show. It turns out he's not actually, uh, and for legal reasons, I have to call him my biological stepfather now, or he's going to sue me, according to his legal department. But he's still my dad. To me, he is. He's still daddy. We love Tucker. Tucker's a perfect example, guys. He got fired from Fox News for basically speaking the truth. He was the number one host. You can be the number one host and have the best ratings on the network, and they will still fire you if you do not regurgitate their stupid agenda. So that's why it shows you. It's like, it doesn't matter how much success you have. We live in a corrupt world where even the most popular host will lose his job for saying that they're laundering money in the Ukraine. Which is obvious. I mean, guys, look at this Israel-Palestine stuff. Obviously, I'm empathetic to Palestinians. I'm empathetic to Jewish and Israelis. Obviously, I'm empathetic to both sides because I'm anti-war. I hate war. The fact that we go and kill each other as human beings is disgusting. We should be able to come to some sort of agreement. We don't have to kill each other. But the reason... Yeah, I love that. But the reason why we're always going to have war is because there's a thing called the military-industrial complex where America, our biggest export, are bombs. Raytheon, Halliburton, they make money from war. So that's why all of these politicians, whether it's a liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter because they all benefit from these military industrial complex companies that do all their fundraising. So if you have a country that's main export is weapons, we have to have conflict in the world in order to sell those weapons. So that's how you know we live in a corrupt system where People don't need to die. We need to save lives. And he's, he talks about my five cats. Guys, I got toxoplasmosis. I don't know if you guys know this. There's something in the fecal matter of cats that make you more like a cat. And this is a real thing. That's why pregnant women can't be near cats. I just feel bad for all those damn kittens that they're killing with all those bombs. Like, that makes me sad. I just, yes, dude, they're killing dogs. You haven't seen those pictures? In Gaza Strip, there's like a puppy with its leg chopped off. How much weed did you smoke? How high are how high is he? You know, we're live right now. You know this, right? Take a picture of him when you hit your joint tonight. When you load up the bong. This is, this is what you're going to be like. And you're in shape. I believe in you. I believe in all of you. So a little encouragement before we just get done. Yeah, yeah. Just believe in yourselves. You know, I'm an old guy. You know, made some decisions that were tough that, you know, lead me uh, to this point. But, um, yeah, but, but, you know, you guys will be do better because, you know, let me be a role model to not make as many mistakes. You know what I mean? Because it's about, you know, choices you make in life. And I made a few bad ones. But, you know, just do better. Do better. That's all I ask. Very eloquent. Very eloquent. Okay, who's got a question? Come on. Don't be shy. Please. Let's make this interactive. Green sweatshirt. Love this guy. How was the fountain? Dude, the fountain was good. I mean, uh, Don Terrius, we went swimming in there. and I mean, I think he has HPV, but you already had HPV, right? You already had that? You guys know Magic Johnson healed his AIDS. Did you know that, Don Terrius? You know what they figured out? The cure for AIDS? Money. Yeah. This is a South Park joke, but <laughs> it's true. All you have to do is be rich and your AIDS goes away. Charlie Sheen, he's struggling. He has AIDS. Is he dead? No, because he's rich. So, first thing, become rich and then you can survive basically anything. Actually, what's the deal with all these young people getting cancer? Is it from the vaccine? No, it's not. It's not from the vaccine with no long term testing. Because we're all vaping so much and uh, eating McDonald's uh, and drinking fluoridated water. This guy's brilliant. Okay, come on. Who else has got a question? How's your whole beef with uh, Barstool start in the first place? Dude, it's so stupid. Okay, so I went I, I, uh, during the Super Bowl week when uh, this is like two Super Bowls ago when Joe Burrow was in the Super Bowl. Uh, we called into the city uh, Cincinnati City Council meeting and I talked about how I lost all my money. And that I've been gambling on the Bengals because they, had, they weren't expected to go to the Super Bowl. And I was like, I want all my money back. My life's great. And went viral. Barstool Sports posted it. Then they took it down. And I messaged, I'm friends with a guy by the name of Ben Mintz who works there. I was like, why'd you take it down? He's like, oh, well, because it you know, talked bad about gambling. We're owned by, this is when they were owned by Penn Gaming. So they took it down because of some gambling BS. And then Dave invited me on his podcast. 
And then as soon as, as soon as he invited me, messaged me on Twitter, I posted the screenshot. He uninvited me because he saw one of my videos that I'm pro-life and he's very pro-choice. Like he likes abortion. Other than that stance, I think Dave's pretty cool. Because, I mean, guys, let's be real. Bill Maher just admitted it. Uh, abortion is murder. I mean, I hate to say it. I just hate to be like that. And I get why a young person doesn't want to have a kid and have to deal with that responsibility. I get why a person would want to have an abortion. I'm empathetic to that. But at the same time, that is a baby that's <laughs> growing inside of you. And he is okay with, with abortion. I personally think abortion's disgusting and repugnant. And so I went to an abortion rally where they were pro, you know, it was a pro-abortion rally and I made fun of the people. And he posted that video. He's like, I will not have anybody on my podcast that is strictly about politics. He gave some stupid BS answer. So he uninvited me on his podcast. And then like two weeks later, we went up to uh, the headquarters and Don Terrius went in there with his butt cheeks just fully out. Yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, it was crazy, dude. I'm telling you, they kicked my ass. Yeah, I'm, I'm friends with Tico Texas now, the girl that hit me. So, I mean, I'm not going to... I didn't. I wasn't gonna sue or get them in trouble. Like we're just literally just. She did make me bleed, but we're just having fun, joking around. It's not that. And you know, it's funny. Is like Dave has has me totally blackballed from like like you know I, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I confronted Brittany Griner. You know the woman that we traded for the Merchant of Death. We traded her six rebounds in the WNBA for a guy that kills like six people a day every day of the year. And I asked her, was it a fair trade? And the video was huge. It was on top of ESPN's ticker for like two days because, of course, she played the biggest victim. Like she was, oh, my gosh, I can't. I, uh, uh, I'm in the WNBA. We need to fly private now. That was their whole thing is they thought, oh, they could get private jets. Too bad y'all don't make any money and they can't afford it because nobody watches the WNBA. Maybe now they will because of Caitlin Clark and all this stuff. But this was last year. And she tried to use it and play a victim. And Barstool Sports wouldn't even cover it. And it was like one of the biggest sports things of the week. And then on top of that, when we stormed their their uh, headquarters, it was live. They were live on the air. And that video got 3 million views of, you know, of us storming their show. So we gave them one of their biggest videos of the year. I mean, it was one of their biggest stories. And they still hate me because we live in a corrupt world, guys. I'm, a vi I'm not a victim. That's another thing I want to tell all of you before we leave. Do not play the victim do not be a baby back bitch you need to be a pimp on a blimp no i'm serious because every single person here has an excuse or reason where they could be a victim i guarantee it whether your parents passed away something bad happened to you everybody has an excuse literally but that's what the left does that's what people do they try to make you feel guilty and they try to play the victim and if you do that you're you're, you're perpetuating the same evilness that they're doing. So you're not a victim. When bad shit happens, we got to regroup and we got to go kick some ass. That's life, you know, and bad stuff's going to happen. I hate to tell you all that. Bad stuff is going to happen and it's what you do. It's not about falling off the horse. It's about getting back on it. And I'm not talking about Christopher Reeves, the Superman that got paralyzed. For him, he couldn't get back on it. So in certain instances, you could get hurt very bad. So metaphorically, get back on the horse. Okay, who's got a question? Come on. I like this guy, Jeb, 2016. That was legendary. <laughs> How did you get the nickname Pimp on a Blimp? You know, that's a very good uh, question. Well, uh, I've always been a pimp. Uh, I had a stable of prostitutes that worked for me when I was very young. I had the most prostitutes of any 11-year-old in the United States of America. And that's what they just called me a pimp on a blimp. No, actually, why do they call me a pimp? Well, in high school, they if you guys ever see something, I call myself Primetime 99 Alex Stein. My high school football number at the Highland Park High School, I was captain of the football team, and I played with Super Bowl champion Matthew Stafford. So I was good. He plays for the Rams now, Los Angeles Rams. So I used to be a stud in football. So I was a pimp. I was a pimp on a blimp back then. Stein man, 99 man. And now I'm in my late 30s, and I'm still the same. Still a high school hero, still a pimp on a blimp. Because it's a mindset. It's not really about a pimp. I don't really actually sell sex, you know, women. Well, but the blimp is a metaphor for you got to fly high, dog. We got to freaking, you know, shoot for the stars, pimp. And there's a big conspiracy, too. You know, they say blimp travel is actually pretty safe. Then that Hindenburg blew up and like, no more blimps. So I'm pro blimp. I, I don't like this anti blimp conspiracy. Um, okay, who's got a question? Come on. Is that it, folks? Is our night going to be over? Yes, I like this guy. Uh, what do you like talking about most out of everything that you... Uh, conspiracies. Like, tonight, we haven't even got into conspiracies. Like, for me, guys, 
And my favorite conspiracy? Well, there's two. My favorite, favorite conspiracy is that Michael Jackson was not a pedophile. And you're like, what do you mean Michael Jackson was a pedophile? First of all, Michael Jackson was investigated by the FBI for 19 years, never convicted of a crime. And if you guys saw this documentary, it's called Leaving Neverland, and it had Wade Robinson and James Safechuck. Those are the two kids that said he was molested. Wade Robinson was his lead character witness twice, was Michael Jackson's lead character witness twice in two different civil cases, and he was, pro- was cross-examined by the top prosecutor in the state of California, and both times on the stand said he was never touched, never did anything sexual with him. Macaulay Culkin slept with him in the room, which is weird. I know it's weird. He's sleeping in a room with an adult, but at the same time, Michael Jackson was famous when he was five years old, so he has what's called arrested development. So like, he wanted to be a kid because he became an adult so early. He said that he never touched him. And then James Safechuck in the same documentary said that he was molested in the train house. In the year that he said it happened in 1993, the train house not only was not built, but the architect had not even drawn up the plans for it. So there's just some holes in their story. And he was investigated for 19 years. So I think that's my favorite one. I don't think Michael Jackson was really a pedophile. I do think he was a weird guy that probably liked kids, but I don't think he was a sexual freak. My second favorite. And you guys are going to, some people are going to believe it. Some people are not. The moon landing was fake as shit, guys. Who believes we went to the moon? Raise your hand. Oh, my gosh. But we can't go there today? How the hell did we go there in 1969? But we can't go there today. And then on top of that, they accidentally deleted all the telemetry data, so they don't have any of the data. And the original footage is all bullshit. The freaking uh, the shadows are crossing. I just don't believe that we went to the moon in 1969 through 1972, but we haven't been back. There's just something... There's something fishy about NASA. It goes back to the evolution thing. It's like they want to make you think that we're all just a cosmic accident, like floating through space and nothing matters. Because, okay, th- this is where it comes down to, and this is we'll get, because I know we're, we've been here for a minute. I know you guys don't want to be here all night, but people like Hillary Clinton worship Satan, I think, allegedly. And they, uh, they like this thing. They like this thing called Baphomet. And supposedly, like, to get into the Illuminati, you have to go into, like, a coffin and crank it in front of, like, a group of people. And they do a humiliation ritual. And that's why Jeffrey Epstein would like you to sleep with a kid so they would have, like, blackmail on you so they basically can control you. But all this plan, it comes from the Bible. And it's very weird. Genesis chapter 11, verse 9. That's the story about the Tower of Babel. If you flip that, that's 9-11, which that's just a weird coincidence. But in the Tower of Babel, Nimrod wanted to build a kingdom all the way to heaven. He wanted to build a tower to heaven. And some say to maybe go kill God or take over, whatever. And God made everybody speak different languages and everybody broke off in tribes. They couldn't communicate. This is in the Bible, Genesis chapter 11, verse 9. But what these people are trying to do today is they're trying to reverse engineer that. They want us under one rule, one currency, one world order and that is a real thing i mean if you look at our border now people want to say oh the white replacement theory is a a conspiracy it's not because these politicians when you let illegal immigrants come across our border then the census bureau is going to count that person so now the lines and the the districts of the politicians are going to get more representation because of illegal immigrants so they're white excuse me venezuelan washing i guess is the proper term they don't want us to be one you know they want us to be one race they don't want us to be different and that's what's actually brilliant like i'm not racist i love all colors creeds sexes and i really i don't care if you're a trans person if you're an adult i just don't like young kid kids getting um you know told that they're in the wrong body and they need to cut off their penis i am against that but my point is it's like there is something good about tribalism there is something good about like you know being with people that like your family like it's important to be close it is okay to be in different groups but they want us to be under one ruler and that's what you learned during the pandemic guys i mean they shut down the whole world and why does america why do our tax dollars go to to support iran and israel bombing each other it's just ridiculous so that's going to be in the future we'll, we'll probably hopefully it won't happen in our lifetimes but i'm telling you they do not want borders yet like places like japan there's other countries that have strong borders that will not fall into this trap but america is the most powerful country on earth. I mean, that's maybe debatable now. But if they can get us to be a, how do I describe it? They want us to be like a soulless country with no race. They want us to all be the same race. They want to tell kids that they can cut off their penis. So they, they want to create a third sex. That is the real conspiracy. And so they're basically reverse engineering 
the Tower of Babel so that we're all under one ruler. And that one ruler would be Satan. And that's true. These people are all freaking crazy devil worshipers. Okay, who else has got a question? Brittany Griner, Vladimir Putin. Is there anything there? I don't know, dude. I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> it's funny you say that because, you know, they don't have pride parades in Russia. No, no, they're not allowed. So I would think that, and I asked Brittany Griner, did she have to sleep with Vladimir Putin to get released? And she didn't answer. But uh, no, I don't think he's man enough to mount Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner would probably kick his ass. <laughs> so, and a lot of people are like, oh, Alex, you're a Putin apologist. No, Putin's a bad guy. He throws people off buildings, but uh, he's still probably, uh, how, how do I explain this? Putin's still an evil guy, but the conflict that's happening in the Ukraine over the Donbass region, I'm, I'm kind of empathetic to Putin in that sense because I think it's a small region and these are people that are like, uh, identify as Russian. So we're just killing all these young Ukrainian people for this small piece of land. I mean, I know Ukraine doesn't want to give it up because I guess it's, you know, it would make them look weak, but Vladimir Zelensky, they just want them to be in NATO because they want World War III, guys. World War III is going to happen. So is anybody here going to go into the military? Don't. Do not. I don't want you guys to get enlisted to fight in World War III. Please don't do it. That's serious. Uh, because they will literally chew you up and spit you out like you're just old uh, hamburger meat. Okay, who's got a question? Is that it? Are we done? Okay, one more. I'll ask it all. Um, <laughs> kind of conspiracy. What is your, I guess, prediction for the election this year? Who do you think is going to win? Will there be another COVID type event or you know something like that to... Well, I was just talking about this, and I was like, you know, right now we're not doing, they don't have a COVID type event uh, because now we're going to get into World War III. That's what's distracting us. But I think the same outcome is going to happen that happened in the last election. I think they're going to steal it or fortify it. Excuse me. They fortify the election because it only takes a few states and a few places in those states to basically decide the whole election. So, yeah, I, I don't, sadly, guys, everybody knows Joe Biden's a puppet. Even if you're a liberal, they know Joe Biden is being run and propped up. I mean, the guy can't even walk. I mean, he's, you know, falling down the stairs. He's crapping his pants. Uh, he's sniffing everybody. I mean, everybody knows he's not the real leader of the free world. So we have a deep state that runs this country. And that, and when you say the deep state, what is that? Well, the CIA even says that they're not worried about presidents because the CIA is going to be there forever when a president's only going to be there for four to eight years. So there is a deep state of people. You can just see, you know, Trump when he was in the White House, all they try to do is impeach him. So the deep state is running the world. I think they're going to rig it again, sadly. It's more of an observation of a movie j just or is coming out of um, the new Civil War movie. Yeah. Like the new American Civil War movie from a, a pretty much an unknown production agency. It's kind of ironic that we're getting a real like what would an American Civil War in today's time look like at this point? Well, you know, I'm very good friends with my buddy Tim Pool. I don't know if you guys know Tim Pool. He's a good friend of mine. But he always talks about, like, how a civil war would, would look. Because I had that question for him. He's always, like, talking about civil war. And basically, it'd be like the states would stop basically doing commerce with other states. Where Texas would, you know, either band up with Louisiana or Oklahoma. And we would stop sending stuff to New Mexico. So I do think it's possible. But, like, a real civil war where people are just going to be shooting each other in the street. I think it's more like a civil war of, like, supplies. Because... Texas has a lot of oil and gas, so we'd be like, okay, we're not going to give you oil and gas to California. So I think it'll be more of like kind of like a proxy war. I don't, I hope, I mean, I hope there's not a civil war, but if they steal the election again, I, mean, I hate to say this, we might need to have a civil war. I mean, I mean, I don't know what else to do. I'm not encouraging a war by any means. I'm just saying I'm anti-war, but it's like, dude, how many times can they, and I said this earlier, pee on us and tell us it's raining and they're going to continue to do it. So don't be like January 6th because that was a honeypot. That's another thing. Another conspiracy, and Alex Jones exposed this. A lot of times at these protests, I go to a lot of protests. It's called agent provocateurs, where there are people there that are either hired by the government or they're government officials that go to a friendly or peaceful protest, and they start acting bad to make the protesters look bad. That's what happened on January 6th. Ray Epps telling people to go in the building. Like, there was definitely FBI agents there. That's what I'm saying. Who opened the door? There's something sketchy going on, and that's what they do. So uh, don't get trapped. Don't storm the Capitol. Don't crap on Nancy Pelosi's desk, even though I know we all want to. Uh, you know, you got to have some autonomy. You got to worry about you, yourself, and your loved ones. Other than that, I wouldn't worry about anybody else. When are you going to box again? Uh, you know, it's funny you say that. Uh, I, I had an opportunity to box in two weeks, but I have a comedy show in Austin I got to do. 
But I am going to box again. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I threw, I had a, I had a scheduled fight against a guy by the name of Modine. He's a Muslim guy from the UK. Nice guy. And I threw hot dogs on him. <laughs> they were turkey dogs. Okay, pork is haram. That was the joke. I just threw, I took off the packaging. They were turkey dogs. And they canceled my fight. I lost 20 grand. Not, not about the money. I was actually wanted to kick his ass. But um, I got fired from that. And then I ended up having to go fight again uh against a guy named mike harrington on a different event and i won it was a nail biter but i'm telling you something everybody in here probably needs to go box a little bit it's a good way to get some aggression yeah and a little self-defense did you never know when a crazy venezuelan guy is going to try to stab you with a needle or dontarius dude i mean everybody needs to have a little even the ladies it's good to have a little bit of a hand-to-hand combat experience so and boxing was just it was it's actually fun so i'm going to do it again uh misfits I would love to box, Dave. Well, I'm uh, rough and rowdy. I'm probably gonna, if they would let me box there, I would. And and, and Billy football. It's funny because there's a guy that's running for Congress in uh, New York City, like District Six or whatever his name's Billy Football or Billy Cotter, and uh, he's political as hell. Uh, and so now they're okay with politics. So I don't know if you guys talk to Dave. If you guys ever run into him, they need to you know be friendly with me again. But with time, I think I will be able to smooth that relationship over. Uh, like boxing, some better than others. <laughs> do you, do, yes. Do you have any advice? Why is it so funny? What are we laughing at? <laughs> there was a fight over spring break. Some people won, some people lost. That's how it goes. Yeah. Do you have any advice for some individuals that might not have had their night that night? Yes, they got their ass kicked. When you guys got your ass kicked. What I didn't realize, too, until I started training is your jab is your most important punch. You know, you almost your jab is almost like a defense mechanism, too, because it keeps you off. You know, it keeps the person off you. So if you are going to train and fight, I thought I'd just be throwing haymakers the whole time. That's not really how a boxing match works. It's really left, 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 and then you counter with the right. So make sure you have a strong jab. Work on that jab. Your left hand, punch the freaking bag over and over. If you have a, if you have a tough jab, you're, you can win almost any fight. Okay, any other questions? Wow, man, I had a blast with you, Gamecocks. You're going to ask, wait, one more, Jeb, one more. Scott Lobito? Yeah, of course, Scott's the man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the pizza guy, yeah. Yeah, Scott's my buddy. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm friends with him. Yeah, I know, but they gave him a summons and they dropped it. But I'm friends with Scott, but Don Terrius and I were inside speaking at the city council that day. You guys got to go look at my YouTube. And he said, what did you say? Come on, Don Terrius, okay, because the show's almost over. Yeah, well, let's just say goodbye to everybody. Come up here. They want to see you one last time. You're the star of the show. And, and tell me, this is true. You are you were a veteran. Hmm? I am a veteran, uh, Navy veteran, guys. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I was about you guys' ages, but yeah. And, and why do? How do you feel that we treat illegal immigrants better than we treat our homeless vets? I have a problem with it. You know, uh, I don't know where it became this. You know. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, w- I, w- I wish they could do something about it because there's a lot of people like me that are not in front doing videos that their life is really, you know, messed up. They have no chance. So think about those people that serve the country and are just out there in the streets just trying to figure it out and surviving. Yes, we got to help people. Okay, and then after this, guys, we'll take any pictures. If anybody wants to get a picture, you guys want to hang out. Um, please come after the show. Let's hang out. Let's talk. I want to encourage you. I love Weed 420 guy. He's going to stop smoking. And your girlfriend's never going to do OnlyFans. I love it. We changed y'all's life tonight. All right. <laughs> you guys can thank me later. This guy figured out the frogs are gay from the water. I love this guy. Dreadlocks doesn't smoke weed. I know we don't believe it, but I love it. Keep it up. Is there anything else we missed tonight, Sean, that we need to talk about? Uncensored America. Oh, we'll give it up for Uncensored America, guys. We wouldn't, this wouldn't be possible. This is a great organization. There's very few organizations that actually have the... Uh, that's God bless Uncensored America and God bless the US of A. Because guys like Sean, this is how... I hate using that word culture war because I said this earlier. I'm anti-war. I don't like to call it that. But it, we do have to create a culture where people can speak freely. And like, there's some people that hated that I was here. It's not that big a deal. But we should listen to all voices. Even the left side, the right side. We should hear all voices and then make, this, make our own personal decision on whether we agree with them or not. And by censoring free speech or censoring me, that's not the country you want to live in because uh, who knows how far that will go. It's a very slippery slope, you know, from censoring medical misinformation or anybody, 
any censorship is bad censorship, in my opinion. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to speak here. Thank you to all the Gamecocks. Does anybody know where Don Staley lives, though? I want to go to Don's house. I want to pay Don a visit. You do? Okay, well, we're going to Don Staley. So after the show, if you guys want to come hang out, we're going to go uh, talk to Don. And give it up for Sean, guys. This wouldn't be possible, Sean. I love Uncensored America for making this happen. Everybody on YouTube, out there in the internet land, we had a blast. Gamecocks rule. Suck it, Clemson. Suck it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me on these days. You're the best man. Sean's I love you. The man. I love this guy. Thank you. Everybody give a big round of applause for Alex and Dontarius. Wait, wait. Let me get one video off the two. Okay. Uh, uh, let's, let's get a video. Who would say, suck it, Clemson! Suck it! Suck it, Clemson! Okay, good. That'll go in the vlog. I love you guys. God bless the youth of our country. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.